In our previous episode, Dr. Escalante talked about his responsibility as the chairperson of NHCP and the mandate of the government agency, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, formerly known as National Historical Institute, is a government agency in the Philippines that works as an arm for culture and development agenda of the government, and visions a Filipino society with citizens informed of their history, who love their country and are proud of their cultural heritage. Its mission is the promotion of Philippine history and cultural heritage through research, dissemination, conservation, Sites Management, and Heraldry Works. It aims to inculcate awareness and appreciation of the noble deeds and ideals of our heroes and other illustrious Filipinos, to instill pride in the Filipino race, and to rekindle the Filipino spirit through the lessons of history. In this episode of Historia, we will continue to know more about Dr. Escalante, the current chairperson of the NHCP and an author of various historical books about his present duties as the chairperson of NHCP and as the executive director of National Quincentennial Committee that was created for commemorating the 500 years of the victory at Mactan the Philippine part in the first circumnavigation of the world, and other related events in 2021. Hey, what's up? I'm Mark Pangilinan, your coolie traveler from Limang Siglo, and welcome to Historia, story within history. In this series, you will hear the stories of every place we visit. Let's explore, enhance our knowledge, but more importantly, enjoy, while deepening our understanding of our history. Yeah, my name is Rene Escalante. I grew up in Back on Sosogon City, I spent my elementary and high school in the province. And then I moved to Manila after I finished high school. I joined the Order of St. Camilo's, it's a religious congregation, serving the sick. I left after I earned my bachelor's degree. I went to Ateneo Graduate School and to UP Diliman uh, uh, for my doctoral degree. Started teaching in UP and then Moved to La Salle after I earned my doctoral degree. And I spent almost two decades with De La Salle University. Now I'm still a faculty of De La Salle and leave because of my current position in the government. So after my term, then I'll go back to teaching. Uh, just to address the needs of the youth, mm -hmm. we regularly conduct webinars in partnership with the Department of Education. Remember that these days, Everything is online. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the trust now of DepEd is to choose these online that they can require for their students. So we reg regularly give them programs, webinars, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, wherein we invite resource persons and experts in Philippine history and some other special topics, and then they conduct lectures. And then DepEd will issue a nationwide memorandum encouraging all teachers and all other related civica, a few other subjects to watch the, the webinar. And sometimes if they if, if, if their schedule is in conflict with the schedule, they, went, they download this and they ask the students to watch this uh, on, at their own convenience. 
during their free time. This one. Now, we also have, uh, you better check the website because we have some activities there intended for the youth. Uh, the packaging of the activity is not so technical. And it's not, uh, even the wordings and the illustrations, they, we, didn't, we did not use the, the, the typical archival thing, uh, historical past. Many are in the form of animation and a few others. Just for us to be able to connect with our youth. We also organized what we call the local historical networks. This, you know, in the countryside, some LGUs and some universities, they have local study centers, and from time to time, they also do history. Because under the under the charter of the LGUs, the local government code. It is one of the duties of the LGU to know their own history and to promote it. And you know, some mayors and governors of this foresight uh, love this history and culture. They form and support them. Sometimes they partner also with local universities and state colleges and universities. We engage them. So we use them as partners at local level. So this is one of the ways that we are using in order to reach the grassroots. Now, as I mentioned earlier, also tie up with national historical organizations. We are the Philippine National Historical Society. We are the Philippine Historical Association. And we have also the Adhika, Association ng Dalubasang May Hilig Sa Kasaysayan. They have also representatives from the regions and from the localities. So every time we have activities, we always cite them and give them information and send invitation. So this is another venue where we can engage the masses, particularly those who are into history. Is history objective? Yes. Sometimes, no. So let me answer this question. Let me approach this question. We have some canons in history. We, have, we call this the facts of history. So this is not subject to interpretation. The Declaration of Independence happened on June 12, 1898. It's a fact. It is not subject to interpretation. If you disagree, you're wrong. It happened in the house of Emilio Aguinaldo located in Kawi. It's a fact of history. The Battle of Mactan happened in Cebu. The date is identified by Pigafetta. That's fixed. And if you will assert otherwise, I will tell you you're wrong. Now, the problem is history goes beyond facts. And if you will just focus on memorizing facts, dates, personalities, and events, you're not yet a historian. Mm. This is the big confusion of everybody. Why? Because history should go beyond memorization of facts. The next trust of history is to explain the facts in order to get meaning out of it. Why did Magellan lost in the Battle of Mactan? History should also explain that. Why of all the people Rizal was executed, why they made it public? Similarly, the Gumbursa were also executed in public. Why it took the Filipinos more than 300 years to revolt against the Spaniards while the Mexicans and other Latin Americans revolted early? So, history should not only answer the question, what? If you will remain in that realm, then you can still be objective, but once you transcend and go beyond and engage in a higher form of history, then we might have now differences. Now the more, if you will ask the question, what is the relevance of those events in our life now? To me, as a government official, to you, as a media practitioner, and for those people who are into teaching, and for those who are writing, 
for an ordinary people on the street who is selling this and that. Kasi minsan, di ba? Bakit ba natin, how, why are we going to commemorate the Independence Day in the midst of the pandemic? Mm -hmm. What meaning can we get out of it? Why spend money for that? Mm -hmm. For the commemoration of the 500th anniversary in the midst of the pandemic? It's just a waste of time. We are now asking the relevance. For some people, it's, re it's still relevant and we should not treat this as an ordinary day. But for others, they don't matter. bother. <laughs> don't care. There we will have differences and you cannot be objective. Because history is also affected by personal biases and prejudices. History should go beyond the enumeration of facts. We should explain, we should justify, we should rationalize and fill the gaps. This is where we have variety. Okay? There is also a saying that every generation should write its own history. Why is it so? Let me touch a controversial topic. Okay. Martial law years. Mm -hmm. From 1972 to 86, the most dominant narrative of that era is the narrative of the Marcos administration. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, mm. You look young. <laughs> you haven't witnessed. Yes, sir. You're not a martial law boy. You know? So they considered martial law as one of the glorious episodes in mm -hmm. Philippine history. And we talk about this, the new society, etc. Et After the fall of Marcos, 86 onward, we have now a different narrative. Everything identified with Marcos is even. Different. Now, these days, we are entering a new phase. Mm -hmm. And the temporal distance that we have now, with 1972 to 86, and 21st century, will give us opportunity to evaluate which of the two previous narratives is really a faithful narrative of what happened mm -hmm. from 1972, or you can go back to 65, uh, up to the fall of Marcos in 86. Okay, how do we manage if there are conflicting mm -hmm. accounts? Sometimes it's not really conflicting, it's just they are looking at it from a different point of view. Mm. And the point of view depends sometimes on political affiliation and sometimes class interest, personal interest, <laughs> and to some extent also regional interest. interest. Mm. Now we are only using the martial law years here. We also have differences. If you go back to revolution, mm. we have the pro-Aguinaldo and pro-Bonifacio group. Mm. So if, if you are from Cavite, obviously, you want to portray the latter part of the revolution because your hero now is Aguinaldo. If you are from Manila, if you are affiliated with the Bagdiwang block, then you want to focus on the early part of the Katipunan because the hero there is Bonifacio. If you are from Laguna, you want to go farther earlier. So we want to deal with the reformation era and you will just take the revolution as an option mm -hmm. of the reformation. So we are affected by our own biases and prejudices. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we cannot say that you are wrong. Mm -hmm. And he is right. It just so happened that your focus is different from my focus. Mm -hmm. That is why we have a different subject matter and a different appreciation of the event. Chairman, what would you want to be your legacy as the NHCP Chairman? You know, that's the least of my concern. Every time I work, I don't care about what will be my imprint later on. And 
I don't want to consider this as my legacy. This is our legacy. This is NHCP, it's not Escalante. Uh, whatever church we restored, whatever major event we commemorated, whatever publication agency, I don't claim it to be my legacy. I'm just here as a salaried official doing his job. No, no, I, 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 I don't pay attention. I'm not a politician and, you know, mm -hmm. serving the general public doing my job it's only my my day-to-day -day life and uh, as to how i am going to remember to be remembered in, in the coming days or years or decades doesn't come into my mind there is an african saying history is incomplete until the lion tells its story History is often written by the hunters and not the hunted. History is not only knowing what, where, and when. It is important to know the why and its relevance to us and our society. Time flies so fast, but every minute is a story. Thank you for watching this episode. I'm your Kulit Traveler, Mark Pangilinan. Our national hero, Jose Rizal, once said, He who does not know how to look back at where he came from will never get to his destination. See you again next week. And this is Historia, story within history. Here at Historia, we don't have a monopoly in knowledge, talent, and information. If you would like to be one of our Council of Consultants, we would be more than willing to discuss it with you. Just email us at mark at limangsiglo.org or message us on Limangsiglo Facebook page.